It is time to begin our meeting this evening. I will call to order the September term of the Williams County Commission. At this time, uh, we'll have the invocation and the pledge to the flag. We'll ask uh, Commissioner Cheryl Wilson to have the prayer for us, the invocation, and Commissioner Jason Parr will lead us in the flag. So if you would, please stand for the invocation and the prayer. And the pledge, please. Bow your heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to this session of the Wimson County Government, please help us as commissioners to deliberate and study the facts and come up with the answers that will be something that all of our county citizens can participate and, and be a part of. Without you, dear Lord, we would not be able to, to go on and to have the ability to deliberate with our commissioners. We thank you so much for the day, for the good weather that we've had so far, and for the soldiers and the people that are overseas, no matter where they are, be with those families all over the world. And we thank you, ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Place the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated, please. <laughs> If you would, uh, please press your present button, white button, so that we can have a record of, uh, of our attendance tonight. Uh, Ms. Anderson, if you would, to record our attendance, please. I have 23 present, one absent. Commissioner Williams, absent. Commissioner Williams asked me to share with the entire body that uh, he's making preparation and plans for his son, Matt's return from Afghanistan uh, in the next few days. He'll be going over to join him when he returns, and uh, Ern is excited about his coming, and he had a lot of things to do to get ready for Matt's uh, being home. So he wanted to share that with you tonight, to his excitement, and uh, Matt will, mm -hmm. he'll be with Matt quite some time before he is uh, redeployed. So we're thankful for that. On the agenda <clears throat> down in the C County Commission section tonight, uh, I would like the permission of the Commission to move up to this part on the agenda, the election of the Chairman for the next year, and then after that uh, we'll take up the Chairman Pro Tem. So at this time I will turn the Chair over to Madam Clerk and Ms. Anderson and ask her, is any objection to moving that up on the agenda? I see no objection. Now, Madam Clerk, if you would please take the chair and conduct the election. I'm glad I don't have to sit in this chair all the time. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, the floor is now open for nomination for chairman of the county commission. Do I have a motion, please? I'd like to nominate Houston Merritt. Second. The second. Okay. The, the nomination is Commissioner Barnwheel. Second, made by Ms. Mills. The nomination is deceased. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Leach um, made the motion for deceased. Second by Commissioner Hayes. To, all in favor to elect Commissioner Naren by acclamation say aye. Aye. Opposed? I see none. Congratulations, Commissioner Naren. You have been elected again for another year. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, the chair will entertain now motions for nominations for Chairman Pro Tem for uh, the next uh, 12 months, term expiring 8 of 10. I'd like to uh, nominate Commissioner Walton. Second. Commissioner Walton has been nominated, the second by 
Made by Commissioner Bain, second by Commissioner Cook. Other nominations? Is there a second? Com Commissioner Barnwell made the motion to elect uh, Commissioner Walton, second by Commissioner Mills, by acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Show it unanimous. Congratulations, uh, Commissioner Walton. Thank you. <coughs> Approval of minutes of the regular July 13th, 2009 County Commission meeting. Each of you received copies uh, in the commission packet. I'll entertain a motion to accept those. Hello. Commissioner Wilson, the motion. Commissioner Walton, the second, to approve the minutes. Any discussion or changes? Uh, we've had a couple corrections that Commissioner Para uh, brought. To any, is there any other, any other comments on the minutes? I see none. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Show that as unanimous. Introduction, acceptance of the Highway Commission minutes. Those were sent out in the packet. Commissioner Cook, the motion. Commissioner Green, the second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Show it unanimous. Citizens communication, we have no one that signed up for that. Uh, moving on to communications and messages. Uh, we have one late filed resolution. Resolution 90929, uh, this was in the packet, and uh, we need to take that under consideration tonight unless we have an objection. So is there any objection to 90029? That's a resolution, the Sheriff's Department budget. Any objection? I see no objection. We'll add 90929 to the end of the appropriations agenda and uh, take care of uh, that at the appropriate time. I want to thank uh, Officer Lynn Sutton for being here tonight as our Sergeant at Arms. Uh, Lynn, it's always a pleasure to have you with us and thank you for being here and thank you to the Sheriff and all of his department for providing us folks that are here. And keeping with that, I'd like to ask you if you would please, if you do have a pager or cell phone, please turn it off. Make sure it's on silence or off so that you don't in any way interrupt the operation of our business tonight. This is the legislative body of Williamson County, and we respect that and expect you to respect it as well. So thank you for being here tonight. Under other communications and messages, you've got several things that have been sent to you that are laid at your place so that I would point to your attention. September the 21st, there's a rules committee meeting that the chairman of the rules committee has asked that uh, we come together to review any rules changes. So please, if you have any changes that you would like to propose to the rules, please submit those to Bobby Cook because several of us have already given him input on information that needs to be looked at as it relates to the rule changes and he will be putting together a draft resolution. So please if you would uh, take that uh, opportunity. Also, uh, our area that reviews our computers and laptops for the county commissioners, uh, thank you to those that did bring your laptop tonight. If you didn't, uh, we've been asked to please bring your laptop to the Oct October meeting of the county commission so that it can be properly inventoried and reviewed. So thank you to those that remembered and no problem for those, just bring it in October that you didn't, if you didn't bring it to, tonight. Still under communications and messages, I wanna share with the body because you've had several questions. I had a phone call tonight at about six o'clock from Pat Anderson, the chairman of the Board of Education of Williamson County, as it relates to Mr. Michael Looney. I know several of you had questions and comments, uh, and this is just a report to you because Pat could not be here. They are continuing their negotiations with uh, Mr. Michael Looney. He's made several requests for additional benefits, salary, and other things, and those continue to be a part of the negotiation. They offered him a salary of $168,000 a year 
and that salary passed the school boards. Seven voted yes and five voted no, so it did get a majority, but there was some concern about that. Uh, the potential new chairman, uh, new school director, has asked for a guaranteed 4% increase in salary. He's asked for a 5% performance stipend if he does his job. He's also asked for a million dollar life insurance policy that's significantly higher than every other employee in the Williams County School System has available. So the chairperson of the Board of Education gave me this information to tell you that the negotiations are still going on. Most of the requests were denied, and based on her opinion will be denied, but that's continuing to no negotiate. She did tell me that the, when she knows and learns what's going on, that, that she, at my invitation, would make a report to the next meeting of the Education Committee. So I have asked her to be present whenever the next meeting of the Education Committee comes together to update us. Uh, a lot of questions about what's being done and why it's being done, but again, uh, that is in the hands of the school board and we'll continue to follow that negotiations as it goes uh, on through. Commissioner Lynch, you have a question, sir, or comment? I have a problem with him getting a raise in the county when he's the only person in the county that got a raise to start off with, 168000 I don't agree with that. If it left up me, we'd take that back. Commissioner Walton, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would just like to possibly request that when Chairman Anderson speaks to the Education Committee, maybe we could have a joint budget in Education committee meeting at, at that time. Well, there, there are lots of things there that need to be considered and that will be very appropriate. Uh, Mr. Walton and Commissioner Little would like to do that. We can arrange to have that done. Uh, you know, there, this, I, I would point out that negotiations are continuing, but uh, there have been several opportunities that the County Commission has in, had an opportunity to input to the school board on things. and. You know, I was called and asked point blank about the 5% performance stipend. You know, in my business, I don't have any problem with offering a stipend if you do your job, but if you don't do your job, let me decrease your salary 5%. So, you know, it has to work both ways, and there are lots of things there that can be negotiated and worked through, and uh, just want you to be aware that that is where it is, and uh, we'll continue to keep you posted. and. We'll go from there to uh, try to give as much information as we can. Last and final thing, each of you have received from the Tennessee County Commissioners Association the notice of the regional meeting. That regional meeting is at Henry Horton State Park. That's this Thursday evening. I know two or three of you have indicated uh, a desire to go. If you do want to go, uh, Commissioner Hancock, are you going? Uh, I think right now there are two or three that are planning to go. So if you could let the office know, let Randolph know in our office if you can go. If we just have two or three, it makes sense to drive the vehicle. If Tommy wants to go, he's closer from home to Henry Horton than he is over here. So if you would, uh, we'll, we will have uh, Randolph coordinating that for us. And if you could let her know, or Linda. Tomorrow, I think Randolph will be here Wednesday, <coughs> uh, that we can get a count and determine uh, how many of us are going. If, like I said, if two, three, four of us will just take vehicles and go. It does start, I think, at 6.30 this Thursday night, Henry Horton State Park. So I'll just remind you of that. That's all the communications and message. Any, any other message from any other? Commissioner at this point. I see none. We'll move into reports of county offices. Uh, county Mayor Rogers Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could have Mr. Coleman address us on the financial matters of the county. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, we have the 
reports. There were two uh, reports in your packet, and there were some others that were passed out at your desk tonight, but um, kind of catch up since we didn't meet last month. We have a July and August monthly budget report summary there of all the funds in the county. Of course, it's uh, very early in our fiscal year to draw any conclusions from that, but everything appears to be in order. Also, we have the two months of privilege tax for July and August. We're not seeing any marked improvement in that. Uh, if you also notice the chart for the privilege tax, it's kind of flat for July and August. Even though it's down from a year ago, it's up a little bit from where we were December, January uh, of last year. So we'll continue to watch that very closely, but not a, not a big movement at this time. And then the final thing we normally look at each month is the report from the Cool Springs Conference Center. Uh, we've had two uh, rough months. We, in the j month of June, uh, they had a loss, the county loss was $22,410. And in July, the county portion was a loss of 46497 uh, Although that is certainly not good, it's not totally unusual for this time of year. Uh, the targeted business for the Marriott is the business traveler and, and business uh, meetings. And that time of the year, we're having more personal vacations and not as many uh, business events going on. So that's not totally unusual. But we hate to see that any time of the year. But we'll continue to keep you posted on that as we go through the year. Any questions, Mr. Chairman? Any questions, Mr. Coleman, on these reports? I, I see none. Thank you, sir. Mayor? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'd like to ask if we could have Mike Matson, our planning <clears throat> director, come up and give us an overview and an update and some of the procedures that are going on in the College Grove Special Area Plan. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor Anderson, uh, Mr. Chairman, and Commissioners. Uh, you should have received in the mail a memo from me along with a copy of the draft College Grove Special Area Plan. And if you haven't yet received that materials, you should get that in the next day or so. Uh, this is the first of four special area plans that will be developed for the county's villages, uh, as is recommended by the county's uh, comprehensive land use plan. The other villages are <coughs> Grassland, Leapers Fork, and Triune. Uh, the plan itself is essentially a policy document that articulates a vision for how uh, College Grove can change and develop in the future and really what College Grove should be in the future according to the citizens uh, out there. Uh, in developing the plan, we worked uh, very closely with the Citizens Advisory Committee, which included area residents, uh, business owners, and other stakeholders in the area. Uh, and I'd like to point out that Commissioner Lynch and Commissioner Hayes were kind enough to uh, serve on that group, and we appreciate the time and effort that they placed, uh, that they put in on this project. Uh, we also strive to really involve and engage the community in general as we were developing this plan. Uh, we held four public meetings that were well attended, uh, and we really worked hard to uh, try to make sure that the plan reflects the community's vision for College Grove. Uh, in October, we will be asking our planning commission to adopt uh, the plan. We'll, we'll be asking them to do that at their meeting on October the 8th. Uh, and following that adoption, our plan is to ask you all to endorse uh, that plan at your meeting on October the 12th. Uh, between now and then, I would, I would certainly love it if you would take the time to uh, become familiar with the plan. Uh, and I'd like to invite you to attend that planning commission meeting in October. Uh, staff will give a, a presentation at that meeting uh, that will describe the plan and its contents in a lot, lot greater detail. Mike, uh, what's the you. date of that meeting? Uh, that is going to be on October the 8th uh, at 7 p.m. right here in the auditorium. Uh, and that information was, uh, was also included in the memo that, that went out. Uh, so that's really all I have. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to address you tonight. Any questions of Mike on the material that you received in the mail? Everybody get it? Okay. Okay. You will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Hayes, please. Before Mike sits down, Commissioner uh, Chairman, I would just like to express my appreciation 
to Mike and his staff. They did an awesome job of putting everything together and working hard with the group there, uh, and it was, it was well received. They started off a, a little rough out there because they didn't know, the people did not know what to expect, but it became a real united front, and it was because of their hard work, and I just want to thank them for that. Mr. Chairman, just a couple of other things. Uh, on Friday morning, we had several people uh, in Williamson County, but one of them notable was Bill Jorgensen picking up an award for his hard work over the last year through the UASIS Committee, which is uh, the old Homeland Security <clears throat> Bill was uh, recognized and uh, given an award by the uh, Commissioner Mitchell, uh, an outstanding award and dedication of his hard work. Finally, for some of you, uh, this uh, next piece of information, hopefully we in the next year, about sometime in the summer of 2010, 2010, we will finish our work on the zoning ordinance update. Many of you remember we started this journey in September. Um, the diagnosis stage was set up in September of 08. I included a lot of joint meetings, Board of Commissioners, Planning Commission, Board of Zoning Appeals, Zoning Ordinance Update, Steering Committee. Then we developed Module 1, which was most of the administration and the, and the procedure outline. That was forwarded on to staff in uh, November, December of 08. Currently, Module 2, which is the district and the use regulations for a zoning update, uh, was received in March of, of this year. And up to date, uh, staff has put in 460 personal hours in reviewing in the initial and revised draft. The things we still like to do uh, <clears throat> before it goes back to the steering committee and gets through and gets back to you all for a vote, which will be summer of next year or early fall, we have to develop module three, three, which is developing the standards, development of a revised zoning map, and we'll have an update to our traffic shed section of the zoning ordinance, and we will have at least two workshops with the, pub, uh, of, with the public. So we still have a little ways to go on that. Um, but we are definitely making progress. Hopefully this time next year it will be behind us. I will try to entertain any questions that you may have, Mr. Chairman. Or any, any questions of Mayor on uh, any of the things he's reported on? Commissioner Lynch, please. I'd like to commend Mike and his staff for the way they handled that meeting in College Grove. The first meeting we had, it got just a little hairy on the start before the people found out exactly how it was going, and they handled it smooth. Everything worked fine. Houston, I did think of one other thing when Mr. Lynch was uh, speaking. Uh, I've had the opportunity since 1986 to work with Clyde many, many years on the budget committee and many other things, and he did a wonderful job in spite of the health issues that he had this year. And he's already getting back to his old self. I'm kind of getting a little worried already. <laughs> uh, but I want to personally thank him and all the budget committee for a very Difficult journey they carried this county through. It was the first time in the history that I've ever seen the budget, uh, which you all voted on unanimously, be less than what it was in the year before. Uh, that will serve us well for the 2010, 2009, and 10 period of time and for all those members that served. Russell and uh, the other members of this year's budget committee uh, have a very difficult chore and a task ahead of them. Uh, as you heard the reports from David, and you can read the paper and see what's going on in our economy. It is a very difficult period of time, and, but we will get through it. But thank you to Clyde for all of his many years, and thank you for what he's done over the last couple of years. Well, Mayor, while, while we're saying thank you, I, I was in a meeting this past week reporting uh, in Nashville on some of the successes of our budget, and they continue to ask me, how did we do it? How do you do that? And uh, we did it through the leadership of our budget committee, but we also did it because you recognized early last year in August or September that we needed to focus toward this entire process. And with your leadership and Mr. Coleman's, uh, we could have never gotten to where we did without your leadership and on behalf of all 24 county commissioners. I want to thank you for that because you did a superb job. Thank you, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes, you know, and I, we've said this over and over and over, and I want to give a credit to the school board. Our, always, always, out of the 300 and 
thirty million dollars we've got, two hundred and twenty of that is in the area of public education. Public education continues to be the reason that people move here. And you would think that people aren't looking at us. And Matt Largent is not here tonight, our economic development council, but just in the last two or three in the last two months, we have met with several prospects, prospects that are looking at our area and some very promising opportunities. Now, they've, none of them have signed on the dotted line, but it's a real credit when businesses look at the way that you conduct your business, not only in your cities, but in your counties. They look at that. It's a friendly place, place to do business. It's a low-tax county, and it's a wonderful, wonderful school district, and they move here for that. And it's very hard sometimes to... to uh, do the things we need to do in Williamson County, but the school board did their part. I appreciate Dr. David Heath and his efforts, and of course, certainly uh, the chairman of the school board, Pat Anderson, for her Owens job. And of course, it goes without saying, you just can't do this job without people like David and support staff, Diane, and to get all of this work done. There are just so many people that get it done. Uh, during this next year, it will be difficult. We're having the same issues with insurance that uh, the private sector is having. Um, make no mistake about that. Uh, we are working uh, behind the scenes trying to control costs, but uh, as we continue to grow, as we continue to see our hospital and health care issues uh, flourish the way that they're doing, uh, all of the hospitals, doctors, they're all moving around trying to find those extra dollars on the bottom line, and just like we are, if you think health care is uh, at the forefront in Washington, it's, gonna, it's just the same in every one of your businesses and every one of our families, and it's that way. And, and also at the hospital uh, where, where Mr. Smith works, it is everywhere, and, and we are not immune to that. And we have to find solutions to that. And Houston, I know that's your background. I know that's your profession. But it will not be just one single person. It will be a collective effort of all of us uh, picking those things that are important. What's important to us as employees, but what's important to us as a community. Commissioner Wilson. Uh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to compliment uh, everyone on the job that they've done this year. This has been probably, since I've been on the commission, this is probably the toughest year I've seen in a long time with uh, the economy and I, not only the budget committee, but everyone else. But I did want, and I'm glad you said something about the insurance because we've all gotten some calls lately. And, uh, you know, we try to please everybody, but all we're required to do is take the revenue that comes into this county and try to give it to the proper sources and do it in, an, in a way that will be fair to everyone. And we're not going to please everybody all the time, but. I want to thank all the departments for the cuts that they did and for the uh, they're not being able to get raises. I just want to say thank you so much for what you've done, and I'm, um, I just feel like that needed to be said. Thank you. Commissioner Mills, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. While we are um, talking about the excellent work that the uh, mayor has done, I, I don't know how many of you know, but he was recognized by Leadership Franklin for his um, leadership and for the many things that he has done. So I think we should all be aware of that and say congratulations to him. Well, Ms. Mills, I appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, let me get out of here. Y'all are <laughs> all making it rough. But, but I got news for you. The next 12 months, it won't be all this pleasant. <laughs> you, you're on a high note, so you're going to quit yeah, Thank now. you. All right, okay, all right. We'll release the mayor while he's a smiling. Uh, <laughs> Very good. Williams County Schools report uh, from Dr. David Heath, the interim director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thought I'd take a few minutes and talk about enrollment. Uh, our enrollment numbers as of the day after Labor Day, we had about 31,000 students. It's about 350 students less than we projected. Of that growth of approximately 880 students, we did ask principals this year to keep up with private school enrollments and there were about 500 from who enrolled this year back from private schools now there are some every year so and we didn't keep records in the past so before you say well that's 500 new students that normally wouldn't have been there that's not true because there always are some but we didn't there it's just an abnormal large abnormally large number we also had uh, 
a significant number of homeschool students. We didn't ask for that uh, count, but in the report on private schools, we had three schools that reported. One reported 12, one reported six, and one reported four. So um, it's fair to estimate that we probably picked up another 100 students from who returned to us from homeschool. So I think that reflects what the economy basically, uh, you know, is reflecting, and that is that people are, are losing jobs and not moving into the county uh, with the same, at the same level as they had in the past. Uh, <clears throat> we do have teachers remaining. We did have to for the first time, and I'll say the first couple of weeks of school were the most hectic I can remember in terms of kids coming and going, usually up to Labor Day. We change and are putting teachers in, but it's because new students are enrolling. And we had new students enrolling during that period, but we had for every two that enrolled, we had three that were leaving during that three-week period. And for that reason, for the first time in my memory, the day after Labor Day, we actually uh, reduced and forced five teachers across the county to uh, reflect that change of enrollment that had been occurring since the first, uh, uh, week, the first week of school. So uh, we do have teachers remaining in the budget, and we won't release those positions, of course, unless we get corresponding students. We do have places right now that if they got three students, we'd have to have a teacher in grades K-3, for example. We're always at those stages where, in meeting the state ratios, we're uh, at a point where we could have to hire teachers. So, But what we're seeing is the enrollment in the last 10 days uh, is stabilized a great deal and we don't see much of that coming and going like we were the first two weeks of school first three weeks of school i'll entertain any questions if you've got any dr keith what do you attribute the going <coughs> coming is one thing but what what created the departure well i think it was people uh moving because of jobs probably although we don't have what we do know the real thing that's real glaring is that we're 354 students under projection and 348 of those are elementary students. And what that means to me is that younger families have been more seriously impacted by initially than more mature families. And I think that's what we saw. These were all elementary kids that were coming and going. We saw we had virtually no students in the middle and high school and those projections are pretty much on target now. It's also true that most of the uh, private school, I say most, probably 75% of the private school enrolled that came back, came back to middle and high school. But nonetheless, the, the, the volatility has been in elementary and younger families. And uh, I think it's just either moving out because of, of uh, the cost of living and being without jobs or finding a job somewhere. But. Commissioner Chalfont, please. Dr. Heath. Um, and I, I cannot be specific, and I apologize for that. But I have had a couple of reports as it, as it relates to shortages of books. And uh, with the figures down, it could have been worse, apparently. But is there, and I think this is in the middle school area. Well, I think, I think that's partially uh, uh, an error in how people perceive it. When we adopted the um, sixth grade science program this year, we did not adopt a textbook. We adopted science kits and kept the old textbooks. And for not for a student to have every day because we wanted them to, the teachers to teach using the kits, but for them to use as a resource. So I think that's where that is. We have in, in the areas where we have uh, books that we normally and intended to assign to students to take home, we have enough, enough textbooks. It was not a budget issue, it was a curriculum decision that... Uh, I had one final question. It relates to the, um, I guess, uh, grading systems. There seems to be two different styles. I, I'm, again, I'm a little bit vague on that, but uh, as it relates to uh, examinations or testing uh, as opposed to no testing. Is that the case or am I completely off base? Well, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. We do have a difference. We've always had a difference in the kindergarten through second grade report card. It did change again. 
but if it's if it's high school and grading we've not changed grading systems we have a new uh, upgrade to our student information management system which is just the input of grades but it has nothing to do with the change in in the grading system itself thank you Commissioner Perry, you're recognized, please. The uh, increase or decrease in the enrollment, was it any particular schools or areas, and do you see that affecting your five-year request for uh, new school construction at all? Well, the places where we have overcrowding, we still have overcrowding. Um, we have 1,900 students at Ravenwood. That's what we predict, projected. It's an 1,800 student school. Uh, we have 1,850 kids at Independence, and that's what we projected there. Uh, we have still have 600 students more than the capacity of the buildings in the south that that new elementary school will will uh, take care of and we still have an overcrowded school at Trinity so we we were already overcrowded and we didn't lose students remember we gained 880 kids so when you think about where we might be if we were to have another year uh, like this year where we only have a net increase of 275 students moving into the county. When I say net increase, I'm, I'm taking out all the possibilities of the uh, homeschool and private school students. Um, it still would not negate our need for the buildings that we're overcrowded in. I mean, whether we could last a year or two longer, we could because we're, we said we could make it probably another two years with portables at Ravenwood because we had space and we're going to make it another year at Trinity <laughs> even though uh, that's not what we would have desired to do but but we can do that with portables uh, another year at Trinity and uh, we should be in reasonable shape in the other places in the county I believe after so it's not going to make a big difference it may make a difference in um, It'll make a difference in how quickly they fill up, not in the need for the basic schools, I think. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Green, please. Yes. Uh, back to the books. There were some books that had to be returned to be rebound. Right. Has that situation been resolved? You know, Mr. Green, I can't tell you for certain. I know they were working on that last week, and I don't know whether they're back yet or not, but, but I know they were working on that. Yeah, I and I got some emails to the fact that right. they were, and there was, and there was right. some, uh, some conversations that they hope they resolve that thing. Right. So. We send books to be rebound every year, um, and particularly when we don't when we don't buy a new textbook, and we didn't buy some of the science and options. For example, we didn't buy a new chemistry book because chemistry basically didn't change in the last five years. But we did buy a new biology book because biology has changed dramatically. So we did have to have some books rebound, but we have books rebound every year. We probably rebound more this year than normal. Other questions of Dr. Heath? I see none. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> also, we're wanting to report the commission tonight. Uh, Ms. Becky Brumley is here. Uh, if you'd come forward to update us on uh, some of the flu vaccine information. And I, I just want to know if you had anything to do with naming this new flu H. One in one. Not me. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and County Commissioners. I would like to first announce that um, the Williamson County Health Department will be having seasonal flu clinics at the Community Services Building on West Folk Street, Thursday, September the 17th, Friday, September the 18th, again Thursday September the 24th and Friday September the 25th from 930 until 3 o'clock those days the cost is $25 for adults it is 1370 for children six months to 18 years we do build 10 care and Medicare but not private insurance and the cost of those vaccines can be based on family size and income for those people who cannot afford them so we want everyone to come out and get their seasonal flu shot because uh, soon after that we are hoping to get our vaccine for the H1N1 influenza. And tonight I have Dr. Lorraine McDonald, who is our regional health officer, to give you an update on the H1N1 influenza and our planning process and answer, both of us could answer any questions that you may have. Dr. McDonald. 
Thank you so much. Um, we have in our counties surrounding here, including Williamson County, every county has a plan. This county has a great plan and we're ready to go. There's a lot of unknown still and I ask everybody every time I speak to bear with us because things change as, as the day goes on. New news, you know, two shots, one shot. Um, it's gonna be here tomorrow, it's gonna be here in a month. So you have to kind of go with us on that one. Um, we're ready. Uh, the newest update that I can give you is that probably the first amount, the first shipment of vaccines, probably going to be about 50 million that'll come to the entire U.S., distributed by state by population, by region within state by population. So we expect to get several hundred thousand. Um, the plan to immunize has been pretty clear. Um, the groups that are most at risk will go first. We need to get our healthcare workers obviously immunized because they're on the front line. Pregnant women, uh, they're at very extremely high risk, especially in their second and third trimester of pregnancy. And kids, it's pretty clear. We all know from school closings in April and we know from just listening to the news that that is the group that um, probably have no immunity. Um, happily, the group that has probably most immunity is our senior citizens over 65. That's probably because they've been around for several years and they've had flu shots all those years. And every time you get a flu shot, you'll get a little bit of immunity that will cross over to this one. So we're asking um, that group to bear with us as they're always the first ones to line up for seasonal flu. This year, we're asking them to let their grandchildren come because those are the kids that we're seeing really are taking a hit this year. Um, that's the plan at this point. Um, the good news in the last couple of days, early or late last week, we heard that our trials on uh, the immunizations, really good news, about almost eight to 10 days after your immunization, we're starting to see antibodies. We were a little concerned about that because this is a novel uh, influenza and it's a novel immunization. That's really good news. And it looks as though almost certainly uh, all adults will only need one vaccination, which is also good news because of the amount. It's a slow growing uh, vaccine. It's not one that they can churn out really quickly. So it's better for us now. I mean, we're just much happier to know that we'll have a lot more to go around. The other, um, so that's huge. The kids are probably all, and you know, this we'll just have to keep listening for, but the kids are probably gonna need two shots. Just like the seasonal flu, they get the two shots. That's uh, a very important thing. So one shot for adults and antibodies within 10 to 14 days, really good news. Uh, happy to answer any questions. We could be here forever, but uh, got anything that you need so, to know. So that we can have it for the record, identify your name and your title so that we can have that in the record, if you would, please. Sure, Lorraine McDonald, uh, Regional Health Officer for Mid-Cumberland Region. Good. of which Williamson County is one of our counties. Questions of uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. McDonald. Uh, Commissioner Hancock, you recognize, please? Yes. Uh, where is the uh, flu shots actually being developed and produced? I thought I understood you say shipped into the country. There, well, there, there's five different companies within the U.S. And some of the companies are, um, it's, a, it's an interesting process. Some are asking for license to do six months and above. Some are asking only for license for five years and above. Um, they're all, all the companies are, are U.S. companies that are making it. All the vaccine will go be distributed through departments of health within each state. So, I mean, people that are typical uh, vaccine providers can register, like with the Tennessee immunization site, and it will be distributed through the Department of Health to them. Thank you. Commissioner Wilson, you're recognized. Um, yes, I just wanted to pass on some information that I got um, uh, a, a few days ago, uh, stating that the Tennessee Poison Control Center is partnering with the Tennessee Department of Health to provide a flu information hotline. The number is 877-252-3432. And this is being partnered through the United Way of Williamson County and I'm sure other United Way uh, participants. And uh, the hotline will be a weekday uh, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And this will do be done in English and non-English speaking uh, 
means, but this is also in coordination with the Tennessee Department of Health. So I thought I might pass that on to those that are listening. Thank and, you. And updates are continually on the Tennessee Department of Health, you know, tn.gov, the Department of Health website, and you can click on to the areas that are of special interest to whichever group you'd be in, schools or hospitals. Thank you. Commissioner Bain, please. Doctor, the uh, I'm, I'm in that over 65 group, so I'm probably immune to something. <laughs> but there was a time when we were asked to get our flu shots later, like October, November, so that the coverage would extend into the spring, I, I'm supposing February, March. Uh, with the seasonal flu this time being earlier, does it still cover us? It does, and the CDC okay. has gone out and said that they guarantee that you'll have immunity right through the summer. The peak okay. flu, flu season is usually January, February, March. Every once in a while, though, it'll hit us in November, December by surprise. So we like people. It takes seasonal flu six weeks to get full immunity, so we'd like people to get it sooner because we got to move that out so that we can move the next in. Thank you. Commissioner Hester, you're recognized, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I, I was wondering about the the similarities and differences with the swine flu that uh, we had in 1977. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Can you can you uh, it's, give us a description there, please? It was also an H1N1. It is not. This one is a novel strain. There's not that many different strains. There's H1N1 five. There's a two. It's how they all reassort themselves that causes us to have or not have immunity. Um, that swine flu in 76 was similar, and as you recall, we had, we're worried about pandemics and everybody was vaccinated and there was some, uh, it, it never got past Fort Dix, which was a good thing. Um, this time it's a, a similar H1N1 strain, but not exactly. So unless you've been exposed or vaccinated, you're not gonna have total immunity, you'll have some immunity. Yes, and could could you help me understand, please, the uh, ladies who are expecting pregnant women mm -hmm. in their second and third trimester Correct. are more at risk? Did I understand That's that? That's right. That's what Thank we've you. seen from the the from the, our experience from April till now. If you look at um, the deaths that have occurred in pregnant women that were healthy, they were there was six and five were in their late second and third trimester, which is a vulnerable period for uh, pregnancy at any rate, even for se seasonal flu. Um, they were all perfectly healthy. That all children were born by cesarean section healthy, and all the moms died. It tr translates to a death rate of about 600 times higher than would be expected. So we're really hoping that group gets out as, and gets done pretty quickly. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Pair, please. Does there need to be any separation in time between when you get the seasonal flu vaccine and the H1N1 vaccine? The H there's, uh, there's kind of two answers to that question. Um, the vaccine that's the dead vaccine, which we get by injection, you can get seasonal and H1N1 the same day in different arms. The, the uh, live mist, the flu mist that, that the kids like to get because it doesn't involve needles that goes up the nose, you can't get too live. There's a swine, a live swine one as well. There's not a lot of that, but the kids can't get swine and seasonal <laughs> up each different nostrils the same day. That has to be separated by 30 days or at least that's health department policy. Private providers may not choose that 30 day, but that's ours. But yeah, if, if you hadn't gotten your flu and you come for your swine, you can get, they just said, different arms. Different limbs, I think was the word. Can't, can't mix them together and put them in one needle? That's been, that's been requested. I mean, we do do that with other vaccines, but not this one. Okay. Thank you. Anything else uh, before we move on? Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Becky. Anybody else, any other report? Uh, moving on through the report, the reports of county offices. Uh, each uh, of you received written reports from the appropriate committees. Uh, nothing else to report. We'll move on to election and appointments. Appointments of the county mayor, budget committee, Commissioner Russell Little, chairman, Commissioner Betsy Hester, Commissioner Tommy Little, Commissioner Jack Walton, Mayor Rogers Anderson. I'll entertain a motion to accept. 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Unanimous adoption of the Budget Committee, Purchasing and Insurance Committee appointment by the County Mayor, Commissioner Arlene Cook, Commissioner Lewis Green, Commissioner Ricky Jones, Commissioner Doug Langston, serving with uh, Mayor Rogers Anderson. I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Wilson, the second. Commissioner Mills, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Show it unanimous. And then we've got the recommendations of the steering committee for 2009-10. Investment committee, Rogers Anderson, Mayor Anderson, Chair, Joey Davis, Trustee, Commissioner Reba Greer, Commissioner Arlene Cook, Commissioner Doug Langston. Do I obtain a motion? Who made the motion? Commissioner Barnwell. Second, Commissioner Mills. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Short unanimous. Audit committee, Commissioner Clyde Lynch, Commissioner Russell Little, Commissioner Tom Bain. Commissioner Hayes, the motion. Commissioner Cook, the second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Short unanimous. Law enforcement, public safety, Commissioner Chalfont, Commissioner Wilson, Commissioner Barnwell, Commissioner Green, Commissioner Cook, Commissioner Williams, Commissioner Langston, Commissioner Tommy Little, the motion, Commissioner Ricky Jones, the second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Short unanimous. Property Committee, Commissioner Para, Commissioner Chalfont, Commissioner Ford, Commissioner Hayes, Commissioner Mills, Commissioner John Hancock, Commissioner Greer. Commissioner Cook, the motion. Commissioner Green, the second. For the property committee, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Short unanimous. Education committee, Commissioner Davis, Ford, Brockman, Green, Mills, Lynch, and Smith. Commissioner Barnwell, the motion. Commissioner Langston, the second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Short unanimous. Tax Study Committee, Commissioner Wilson, Williams, Hayes, Hancock, and Jones. Commissioner Hester, the motion. Commissioner Greer, the second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous. Public Health Committee, Commissioner Davis, Barnwell, Brockman, Bain, Smith, Mills, and Parra. Commissioner Little, the motion. Commissioner Cook, the second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Show it unanimous. Notaries, you've received the notary list uh, from Mrs. Uh, Anderson in the mail. Entertain a motion. Commissioner Bain, Commissioner Chalfont, the second. All in favor of the notaries as presented say aye. aye. Opposed? Show it unanimous. Adoption of the notaries. Consent agenda. There are two resolutions on the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. Commissioner Walton, the motion. Commissioner Smith, the second. Any other discussion? All in favor of the consent agenda, if you would press your yes button. Opposed? Your no button. Everybody voted it wishes to vote. Please record to vote, Ms. Anderson. Okay, 23 yes. Thank you. Resolution 23 yes, zero no, unanimously adopted. Under new business, there is no zoning. We're moving down to appropriations. Resolution number 9091. Resolution appropriating $136,859.18 from undesignated fund balance to settle court order. Commissioner Barnwell, please. Move for approval. Second. Second, Commissioner Mills. Report uh, from the school board is nine yes and two no. Education committee. Six, four, zero against. Thank you. Budget committee. Far zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Barnwell, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, uh, legal fees for the petitioner in a uh, special education due process case dating back to 2005 2006. 
Uh, it was a split judgment, I believe. It entered part for the petition for part for the respondent school system. As part of the settlement, uh, we get to pay the uh, legal fees incurred by the, uh, the family that was involved. This was initially, I understand, almost $200,000, and it was uh, mo moved down to this number. Any questions of Commissioner Barnwell? I see none. If you're in favor of 9011, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Everybody voted that wishes to vote. Record a vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23, yes. 23, yes. Zero, no. Resolution unanimously adopted. 9093, resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 emergency communications budget by $342,635.87. Revenues to come from state grant funds. Uh, Commissioner Hancock. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Law enforcement, six public in, safety. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget committee. Five for, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, please, Commissioner Hancock. Mr. Chairman, this is a, a grant, some grant money from the state for the emergency communications, and we applied for it and we received it. And it'll be used for regional training of uh, 40 different. Uh, groups that will be trained. Thank you, sir. Questions on 9033? I see none. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Everybody voted to wish to vote. Record a vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. 23 yes. Zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. 8094. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 Sheriff's Department budget by $16,534.30. Revenues to come from state grant funds. Commissioner Hancock, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Tommy Little, the second. Uh, Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget Committee. Five for, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock, please. Again, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, this is grant, grant funds that we've uh, qualified for through the Tennessee Department of Transportation, the Governor's Highway Safety Program, and they'll be used to provide training to increase skills and knowledge uh, in crash, uh, crash investigation, uh, radar training, all this, those associated things. Thank you, sir. Questions on this resolution? I see none. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution 9095, resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 Sheriff's Office budget by $6,845. Revenues to come from Sexual Offender Registry Reserve. Commissioner Hancock, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Cook, the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you, sir. Budget. Five for, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock. Yes, sir. When uh, these people move in and register, they're charged uh, $100 annually, designated by law. And uh, the, it's used for sexual offender contracts and sexual offender office supplies and sexual offender other equipment. So it's put back into the to the monitoring of this group of people. Thank you, sir. This monitoring also allows you to get online and identify every offender that's Absolutely. in the community in the neighborhood. So it's a great program to be able to follow. It really is. If in favor of 9095, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record a vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. Thank you very much. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. 9096, resolution appropriating $47,506.32 to the 21st Drug Court Incorporated. Revenues to come from DUI fines. Commissioner Hancock. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget committee. Five for, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock. Mr. Chairman, this is, uh, again, uh, court fees that are charged and uh, then kept in account and then reapplied to the 21st uh, Drug Court Incorporated. The revenues will be spent for alcohol and drug treatment. Uh, that's about all I know about it. It's, uh, I think I see some 
April day from the 21st to chicken. Thank you, sir. Let, let's make, uh, Madam Clerk, if you would, on the third whereas paragraph TCA 55 dash, that says 101, that should be 10. 55 dash 10 instead of 101. If you'd make the typographical correction, please. Okay. As a part of the minutes, uh, we'll be okay there. If you have any, uh, any further discussion, all in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record a vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. Thank you. Resolution is unanimously adopted. 23 yes, 0 no, 9097. Resolution appropriating $36,326.04 to the 21st Drug Court Incorporated revenue to come from dedicated account. Commissioner Hancock. Move for approval. Commissioner Barnwell, the second, law enforcement, public safety. Six in favor, zero against. Budget. Five for, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock. This is similar to what we just did, except it's coming through the circuit and general sessions courts of Williamson County at collected fees, and it's being applied to drug court reserve balance. Thank you, sir. Questions on? For drug treatment. It'll be spent for drug treatment. Questions on 7097. See none. If you're in favor. Press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. 23 yes, zero no, unanimous adoption. 9088, resolution appropriating $11,998.92 to the 21st Drug Court, Inc. Revenue to come from designated fund balance. Commissioner Hancock. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Green, the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee, please, sir. Six in favor, zero against. Budget Committee. Five for, zero against. Thanks, sir. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, pretty much just like the last one, and it's uh, the expenditures be used for drug treatment. This is the revenues that are generated by the court cost. Questions of Commissioner Hancock on this? 9098. I see none. If you're in favor of 9098, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. Thank you. Unanimously adoption. 23 yes and zero no. Resolution 90912. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 capital projects budget by $331,500. Revenues to come from the sale of property to the state of Tennessee. Commissioner Brockman, please. Move for approval. Commissioner Little, the second. Property committee report. Six four zero against. Thank you. Budget committee, Commissioner Five Lynch, four please. zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Brockman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is revenue coming from the state of Tennessee. Uh, the project that we all know, State Route 840, uh, will be coming through the Springs property. And in order to earmark that fund um, to go for future use, uh, we needed to have this resolution um, state this. Any questions of Commissioner Brockman on this resolution? I see none. In favor of 90912, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please. 23 yes. Thank you very much. Resolution is unanimously adopted. 23 yes, 0 no. 90918, resolution appropriating the amending. The 2009-10 Animal Control and Capital Projects budget by $114,328.43. Revenues to come from County General Fund balance and private donations. Commissioner Hayes, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Budget Committee. Five for zero again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hayes, please. Yes, we've been privileged to have several donations from animal control. And if I might just take a minute, Mr. Chairman, uh, some of them are in kind services. Dr. Haber saw a need with our task force of having an additional um, vaccination in the College Grove area since it was being uh, covered pretty much with some rabies. He went out on his own at his own expense and vaccinated 47 animals and donated the $10 donation back to animal control. He's serving on our task force and has been very generous other task force members saw a need for having some free spay neuter. One Saturday, 
they came together, Dr. Hurd, Dr. Michelle uh, Barrett Preston, and Mary Kirby, who is the administrative staff for the veterinarian program at Columbia State, and they gave of their time and neutered, spayed and neutered, 29 animals at no expense to us uh, for, the, uh, for the animal control program and for the animals. That's 29 that will not be recycling uh, their offspring. These people have been very dedicated, and that's, of course, along with the staff of our animal control. Another member saw a need that we had for air conditioning our kennels. Anonymously, that person donated $100,000 to be used to air condition our kennels. Uh, we're very fortunate to have such giving people in this county, and we'd like to recognize the fact that they have been very uh, giving. Some of this money, as it was mentioned, was, was a rollover from last year, but every, one, every bit of it has been given for the benefit and for the care of the animals, and it will be used for that purpose. Well, th thank you for your leadership in that area. It's a, a great, great effort to support and do the things that need to be done for animals in the county. Any questions of Commissioner Hayes on 909-18? I see none. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please. 23 yes. Thank you very much. 23 yes, zero no. 909-19, a resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 capital projects budget by 5,723.21 for the purchase of equipment for use at Brentwood Civitan Park. Revenues to come from donations. Commissioner Lynch, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Cook, the second. Budget committee report. Five far zero again. Explanation, please, Commissioner Lynch. This is just money that the Civil Town Club donated to buy equipment, and it wasn't in the original budget. Thank you, sir. Questions on 909-19? I see none. If you're ready to vote, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record to vote, please. 23 yes. 23 yes, zero no. Thank you very much. Resolution 909 21, resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 library budget by $81,407.23 revenues to come from miscellaneous donations. Commissioner Barnwell, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Whoa. Langston, the second. Budget uh, library board report. Uh, six four or seven four zero again. Thank you, budget committee. Five four zero again. Thank you, explanation, Commissioner Barnwell, please. Yes, this is just the accounting of various donations we've received to put them in the appropriate areas for where we're going to be spending those items. That Thank money. You. Thank you, sir. Questions of Commissioner Barnwell on number twenty one. See none. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record the vote, please. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Thank you. 23 yes. Resolution unanimously adopted. 23 yes and zero no. Resolution 90924. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 Health Department budget by $448,062. Revenues to come from grant through State of Tennessee. Commissioner Lynch. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Little. Tommy Little the second. Budget committee report. Five far zero again. Thank you, explanation, Commissioner Lynch. This is a grant that came from the state for the health service from the rural areas, and that's where it's going to be spent. Thank you, sir. Questions, Commissioner Lynch, on resolution number 24. I see none. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Commissioner Barnwell. Yes, Commissioner Barnwell. Thank you, Commissioner Bain. Thank you. Uh, 23 yes. 23 yes, zero no. Uh, just to point out, Resolution 24 is all these funds are for the operational cost associated with the H1N1 uh, flu vaccine. So I just wanted to have that, make sure that's in the record uh, there that's on the resolution. 909-26, Resolution Appropriating and Amending the 2009 10 circuit court clerk's budget by $25,000. Revenues to come from reserve account. Commissioner Lynch, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Hancock, the second. Budget committee report. Five, four, zero against. Explanation, please, sir. 
Ms. Anderson needs some money for equipment to make her office work right, and this is from the filing fees. Yeah, this, these are filing fees. This is in circuit court. This is in Debbie Barrett's court. Uh, Miss Anderson said she'd be glad You're to right. take the money, but uh, <laughs> we get the money. <laughs> I pardon you for there, but Miss Debbie Barrett may have a question about that. So that's for circuit court clerk's office. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Twenty-five thousand dollars. So any other questions on nine oh nine twenty-six? See none. If you're in favor. Press your yes button, the post your no button. Report to vote, please. 23 yes. Thank you very much. Resolution unanimously adopted. 23 yes and zero no. Resolution 90927, resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 economic development budget by $1,500. Revenues to come from grants received from the state of Tennessee. Commissioner Lynch. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Cook, the second. Budget committee report. Five, four, zero again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Lynch. This is just money coming from a grant from the state to go into the Economic Development Department. Thank you, sir. Any questions on Resolution 27? I see none. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record the vote, please. Okay. 23 yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. 23 yes, and zero no. Resolution 909-28, resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 county general budget by $105,576.71. Revenues to come from victim assessment fees. Commissioner Lynch. Move for approval. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Green, the second. Budget committee report. Five, four, zero again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Lynch, please. This is just money coming into the budget from victim assessment fees to pay for the way fee, $45 on each program. Okay. Any questions of Commissioner Lynch on number resolution 28? See none. If you're in favor of resolution 909-28, press your yes button, oppose your no button. Report to vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. Thank you very much. Unanimously adopted. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution 909-29. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2009-10 Sheriff's Office budget by $6,600. Revenues to come from other direct federal revenue. Commissioner Hancock, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Barnwell, the second. Law enforcement, public safety. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget committee. Five, four, zero against. Thank you, sir. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, money that comes from the United States Marshal Service for, uh, that can be shared with local governments that's helped in solving cases. And these funds are, are used uh, for the Sheriff's Department to purchase data processing <coughs> equipment and other supplies for the task force officers. Thank you, sir. Questions of Commissioner Hancock on number 29. I see none. If you're in favor of resolution 909-29, press your yes button. Opposed your no button. Has everybody voted that wishes to vote? Court to vote, please. 23 yes. Thank you very much. Resolution unanimously adopted. Commissioner Hancock, please. I'd like to just thank the sheriff and uh, his department for this year. They searched these grants and with the cooperation of the county general office and they they found many thousands of dollars to put back in this budget from uh, from various agencies for work they were doing and been excellent to work with thank you very well said uh, thank you very much resolution 90910 a resolution to establish a lower speed limit zone on Bethlehem Loop Road to accommodate the Franklin Christian Academy to be located at the Bethlehem United Methodist Church. Commissioner Brockman. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Wilson, the second. Highway Commission passed this 5-4, zero against. Uh, explanation, <coughs> Commissioner Brockman, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Franklin Christian Academy will be using the Bethlehem United Methodist Church uh, for their school, and in order to have a uh, school speed zone of 25 miles per hour. Uh, this was um, taken before the Highway Commission. 
and approved unanimously, uh, they will be responsible for the cost of installing that. And it is appropriate to have that school speed zone of 25 miles per hour on that particular road, Bethlehem Loop. Interestingly enough, Benton Hall, another school is across the street, so uh, this will serve both purposes. Questions of Commissioner Brockman on Resolution 910? I see none. Be in favor of Resolution 90910, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Everybody voted, wish to vote. Commissioner Hancock, please. He's out. Okay, Commissioner Hancock's out. Okay. Court of vote, please. Okay, 22 yes. 22 yes, a zero no with uh, Commissioner Hancock out. Resolution 90911, resolution declaring certain property and equipment surplus property and authorizing the sale of the property and equipment at auction. Uh, Commissioner Brockman, please. Move for approval. Commissioner Tommy Little, the second. B uh, property committee report. Six four zero against. Thank you. Budget committee report. Five four zero again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Brockman, please. Yeah, as required by law, uh, any property must be declared surplus as case uh, for these items that are listed here, and I would ask for you to support this. Any questions on 90911? I see none. In favor of 90911, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record the vote, please. 22 yes. 22 yes, zero no, unanimous adoption. Resolution 90913, resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into an, in a local agreement with the City of Franklin for the disposal of batteries, oil, paint, antifreeze, and electronics. Commissioner Hayes. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Jeff Ford uh, was the second, right? Mm -hmm. no. the, Jones. Excuse me, Commissioner Jones. Jones. <laughs> Credit where credit's due. <laughs> Solid waste board. Four zero. Budget committee report. Five, four, zero again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hayes. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to uh, do partnering with the city of Franklin. These special waste have been uh, involved in our household hazardous waste collection. The state has ruled that is no longer going to be possible. So we need to handle our own special waste. It's quite a distance for each person to take their own waste to the landfill. It's available there to, to dispose of it, but it's a, it's a long way. With the city of Franklin's willingness and their space that they have here in Franklin and uh, the Solid Waste Board's endorsement as well as the endorsement of the director of uh, our Solid Waste Department and the uh, director of the City Waste Department, Becky Caldwell, we believe a partnership, <coughs> a partnership will help us all. That way uh, people can carry their waste at any time of the year to um, any work day to the Franklin location right across from our recycling center uh, on Century Court. <coughs> Mr. Bumpus is here if anybody has any questions, but it's something that's a win-win for everybody because we can take solid waste all year and, or, and uh, this is special waste and it is convenient to all areas of the county, whereas if you lived in Nolensville, the landfill was several miles away. Commissioner Hayes, does this replace the annual hazardous waste day that we've had? The state is going to be allowing us, hopefully, one, one time a year rather than twice, and it will be just for real hazardous the waste. Okay. Um, and let me verify that I'm giving you all the information with Mr. Bumpus. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was what I, information I had. Because I understand there have been questions about we typically have that in October. When is it going to be? Well, this year there won't be one. It will be in spring, correct? In so spring. We'll, we need the public to be aware that the hazardous waste material day will be in the spring of 2010. And with this adoption, you can start taking your these items to the city of Franklin uh, after this is all adopted. After the work, everything is worked out right. Okay, and we, we want the public to know that this was not our decision to change this. This was the state of Tennessee. Thank you. Commissioner Pair, please. Do you know what the hours of operation are that we can drop them off for the days with the Frank location? Mr. Chairman, may I ask Mr. Bumpus to Mr. come Bumpus, up? Mr. Bumpus, would you come forward and 
just to announce the hours and also the location of where people can start taking uh, batteries, oil, paint, antifreeze, and electronics. Please, sir. We've been accepting the landfill for quite a while, but it is, is that out of the way. So what we worked with City of Franklin is they're going to be open Monday through Friday. But what we are aiming to do at the very first is have a couple of Saturdays, and we're going to team up where we carry our larger trucks because they have a different type of truck than we do to be able to handle a large volume at first to kind of get the volume down. And the city then will start taking that, but it's also going to include e-waste. And so we should be able to help everyone. It's, a, it's about as centrally located as I could get. The convenience centers, we'd have to change the type of permit. We'd have to go into commercial permit. We don't want to do that. This is a commercial facility because it is a transfer station, and it's either that or Murph, and at Murph we don't have enough room. Tell, tell, her, tell the public where the Franklin location All right, it's on is. Century Court right before you, well, after you pass the jail and collect the $200, I think. Right, Sheriff? Right across yeah. the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right up off the hill behind the Sheriff's Across department. the street from the jail. Right. And Commissioner Hayes, please. If I could just again say this is a wonderful opportunity that we've had to partner with the city of Franklin, and we, we certainly appreciate the mayor, the board of Alderman, and the Solid Waste Department and Becky Caldwell and her willing, their willingness to do this. Thank you. Any follow-up, Commissioner Pair, please? Um, no, if, I, I'd appreciate if you could put it on the website, as much information as possible for people if they need to uh, find out more information. We're going to specify what a special household has waste is, so we've got to make a distinction between pesticides, herbicides, and the both of both. Right. Very good. Any other questions? Commissioner Hester, please. Um, yes, sir. I sp thank you. I, I spoke to Joanne Jackson and did some research. I think the hours uh, at this transfer station on Century Court are from 7.30 till 3 o'clock. Is that even close? <coughs> Uh, right now, Lewis, if you would step up to the mic so that we can hear you on TV. Right, right now, what they're going to do is set the hours during the normal business hours because they actually open up at 4:30 in the morning. Oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> when you're a garbage haul, you have to get out early before rattle all the cans so everybody wakes up. But uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it will be Monday through Friday, general. And like I said, we're going to set up a couple of special Saturdays. We'll advance them a whole lot. We'll advertise on radio, TV, and, and the newspaper now. Thank you, Mr. Bumpus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Other questions before we move on? Eight on 909.13. I see none. If you're in favor of 909.13, press your yes button. Opposed your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23, yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. 23 yes, 0 no, 909 14. Resolution declaring certain property and equipment surplus property and authorizing the sale of the property by seal bid. To Commissioner Brockman, please. Move for approval. Second. Cook, second. <laughs> Bud Property Committee. 6 4 0 against. Budget Committee. Budget committee record. Wanted more information on this project, but we did vote five to zero in favor. But we wanted more information when to come here. Thank you, Commissioner Brockman. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is again equipment that is to be declared surplus, but in the case of these 15 patrol car light bars, uh, in order for these to go to appropriate new owners, it will be taken a seal bit. Is this the wrong one? Oh, um, it, they will be taken by sealed bid um, so that they can go to other, um, and to service with other police forces, is my understanding. And I know, I know Commissioner Walton is going to try to slip one in and, and get one, but no, just, just kidding. <laughs> Mr. Lynch, uh, the sheriff reported to us tonight at the law enforcement committee that all of these light bars uh, have been Everything has been used that can be reused. These will not fit the new cars. These are light bars that date back several years and absolutely are basically that worthless. Was, that was a problem, I believe, mm -hmm. where they couldn't be used. Mm -hmm. It was. And they couldn't be used. And, of course, as was pointed out by Commissioner Brockman, 
the reason we're not selling these at public auction is we don't need uh, individuals not affiliated with the enforcement of the law running around with blue lights on the top of their pickup truck. So uh, these are sealed bid and will, will be monitored accordingly. So I cover that okay, Sheriff? Is that pretty well way it is? Any other questions on 90914? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record the vote, please. Well, Ernie, one, one, two, three, yes. Twenty-three yes, <laughs> zero no. Resolution is adopted. Nine oh nine fifteen, resolution declaring certain equipment as surplus property and authorizing the sale of the equipment to Commissioner Hayes, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Solid waste board. Four four zero against. Property committee. Six four zero against. Budget committee. Five four zero against. Explanation, Commissioner Hayes. These are items that are no longer needed. In fact, uh, most of them are not able to be used because we do wear them out. And uh, because uh, of the nature of the auctions that handle this type of equipment, it is to our benefit to put them in a special auction rather than along with our other things. Very good. Any questions, Commissioner Hayes, on resolution number 90915? I see no questions. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. 23 yes, zero no, unanimously adopted. 90916. Resolution to adopt the home program policies and procedures for Williamson County, Tennessee. Commissioner Hayes. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Green, the second. Budget committee. Five four zero again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hayes, please. We had earlier approved the grant for this uh, program, but these are the policies and procedures. And if I just might make mention, the home program is a grant from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development that is designed to help provide and maintain decent, safe, and affordable housing. The program is administered through the Tennessee Housing Development Auth uh, Agency. You must apply. You must have owned your home or held a 99-year lease on the property for at least one year and must have lived in the dwelling during the last calendar year. And you must also meet the income requirements. This is a voluntary program. It's one that um, the funds will be used to correct any code violations and any deficiencies in the dwelling. You can apply or call more information through call the mayor's office or Mitzi Zergen at the Greater Nashville Region to cancel Council at 8803540. But the easiest way would be to call our county mayor's office and they can give you other information. There are criteria that you go by, but it's certainly a wonderful opportunity for people in our county who need some assistance in getting their home livable and safe again. And Commissioner Hayes, there have been meetings in Nolensville and Fairview. Yes, sir. But uh, we want to particularly publicize that this is available countywide. Yes, sir, it is. And there have been several people, I think, who've been at both of those meetings. Uh, our Linda has, has been there to, to check, and uh, I think some interest has been expressed. Thank you very much. Any questions of Commissioner Hayes on 90916? I see none. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record the vote, please. 23 yes. Thank you very much. Resolution unanimously adopted. 90917. Resolution changing the name of a dead end road currently referenced as Old Franklin Road to Walker Cemetery Road to Commissioner Jones and Greer. Move for approval. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Jones, second Commissioner Greer. Highway Commission passed this four yes, zero no. Explanation, Commissioners. 840 uh, dissected Old Franklin Road and left a dead end road, and this will enable the residents out there to get the deliveries and mail without any confusion. Anything else, Commissioner Greer? Uh, no. Okay. Any questions of Commissioners Greer and Jones on 90917? See none. If you're in favor of this resolution, press yes button. Oppose, you no button. Record the vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. 23 yes, zero no, unanimously adopted. 
Resolution number 90920, resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into an interlocal agreement with the City of Spring Hill for reimbursement of road construction work for the Longview Parks and Recreation Facility. Commissioner Lynch, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Hayes, the second. Budget Committee. Five, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, please, sir. This allows Williamson County to be a good neighbor to the City of Spring Hill and spread the payment over a five-year period. Any questions of Commissioner Lynch? Commissioner Hayes, you have a comment? Yes, this is another opportunity for partnership and to work together, and we'll, we'll still be getting our money. It's just over a five-year period. So it's a, a good effort. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I see none. Be in favor of 90920. Press your yes button, oppose your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Okay, 23 yes. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. 90922, a resolution authorizing the county mayor to enter into an agreement with Center for Toxicology and Environmental Health, LLC, concerning non-attainment status. Commissioner Lynch. Move for approval. Mr. Tommy Little, the second budget committee report. Five, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Mr. Lynch. With your permission, I'd like to Mr. Coleman to explain this resolution. Very well. Senior Coleman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a study that's going to take place, uh, hopefully to keep us out of an attainment zone or a non-attainment zone. And uh, we're very fortunate that the TMA group is also going to partner in this grant, and they're going to pay for the study to be done, and uh, we appreciate their assistance. Am I on the right resolution? Okay. Yes, sir. I'd already flipped the next one. Any other questions? Diane's here if you have any questions for the TMA group. Of 909 any questions? I see none. If you're in favor, 909-22, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23 yes. 23 yes, and zero no. Well, the chair will recognize Ms. Debbie Henry. Thank you for being here with us tonight. You've been patient to sit here with us, but uh, we're just about finished. Resolution number 90923, resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into an interlocal agreement with the City of Franklin regarding the transfer, receipt, and expenditure of funds received from the Justice Assistance Grant Program. Commissioner Lynch. Move for approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Commissioner Cook, the second. Law Enforcement Committee report. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget committee? Five, four, zero against. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Lynch, explanation, please. This allows the mayor to work with the city of Franklin really and truly to see how we're going to split that money. <laughs> that's, a, that's in a simple answer. Questions of Commissioner Lynch on 909-23? I see none. If you're in favor of 909-23, press the yes button. Opposed, you no know button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 23, yes. Thank you very much. Resolution is unanimously adopted. Resolution 90925, a resolution authorizing the continued withdrawal from local government investment pools for the purpose for which the accounts were created and to dissolve the accounts once the funds are completely exhausted. Commissioner Lynch. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Hayes, the second. Highway Commission voted four, four, zero against. Budget Committee? Five, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Lynch. Could I get Mr. Coleman to explain this resolution? Mr. Coleman, please. Chairman Attorney Bobby Cook is here if you have any technical questions, but 
There are various accounts that we hold in the, in the community development department where developers have paid in for funds in lieu of EMIX or other improvements to those subdivisions uh, at once they're completed. And these funds are available and can be used by the highway department to accomplish that work. Any, any questions on uh, these LGIP funds? Uh, Commissioner Brockman, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How will the request come, come in for, to be used, for the funds to be used? And can just give me a couple examples. Let's take the 57000 that's out there for West Harpeth Road improvements. Basically, once you approve this and these funds are released, then if the highway department goes out there to do paving, then they can actually charge the bills for the paving to that department. So, so Eddie and his department will be responsible for determining yes. how these funds um, are used. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions, Commissioner Brockman? That's it. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> 909.25, if there are no further questions, we're ready to vote. If you would, if you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record the vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Twenty. <coughs> Excuse me. Twenty. <coughs> Twenty-three, yes. <coughs> Twenty-three, yes. Swallow my coke wrong. Twenty-three, yes. Zero, no. Uh, <coughs> resolution is unanimously adopted. Diane has given me the note uh, that we need to make sure the public is aware, and this is on, in line with the home program, uh, Commissioner Hayes, that we just adopted. The deadline for applying for that program is October the 6th. So if there's interest across the county, and anyone interested in applying and getting involved with that, uh, call the mayor's office, 790-5700 to make sure that your application is in by October the 6th. Commissioner Lynch. This is a project that needs careful consideration and handled just right because these people have so much pride they won't, re they won't make a request for this money. It's an excellent program and we just encourage people that live in the county that are eligible for it to please apply or inquire on it and certainly a great program that we need to have everyone take advantage of. Any other announcements? You've got several meeting notices of our, some of our, pro, our, our committee meetings that have been canceled, so please make note of that. Remember the rules committee meeting next Monday evening. In the meantime, share with Bobby Cook any changes that you'd like to see uh, with that. If there's nothing further, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. We're in adjournment until October. Thank you very much.